Imagine never seeing anything your whole life. Then one day, gene therapy gives you the gift of sight. It's happening right now, and this is just the beginning. Welcome back, my knowledge-seeking companions. You're listening to ASD, where we break down the complex forces shaping your world or foretelling your future. Today, Gwen and Charlie are diving deep into some profound science that you're going to swear sounds like science fiction. So engage your mental microscopes, my favorite thought experimenters, because patients with muscular dystrophy are walking again. The blind are seeing light for the first time and nanobots are preparing to repair your cells from inside your body. Prepare to have your minds expanded and your futures reimagined. Let's explore the depths and nuances of these life-changing innovations. Calibrate your curiosity compasses, my esteemed Eureka enthusiasts. This is emerging medical technology news from the past week. therapy right it's like not sci-fi anymore you know yeah it's finally delivering on like decades of promise totally we're seeing some seriously wow things happening for real like you see that study out of U of F, university of florida the one with the blindness lca1 that's uh, incredible it's mind-blowing giving people a totally new experience of of the world imagine like seeing stars for the first time ever or snowflakes it's those things we take for granted totally this condition, LCA1, it's like living in total darkness 24-7. Yeah, the article mentioned um, patients navigating their world, like in pitch black. Having to feel their way around every little task. It just makes you realize how much we rely on our sight, you know. Absolutely. Okay, so for our listeners who might not be familiar, how does this gene therapy even work? It sounds crazy complicated. Well, you can think of our genes like software, right? And sometimes there's a bug in the code, a mutation. Okay, I'm following. So with LCA1, there's this gene... G-U-C-Y-2-D, and it's crucial for the light-sensitive cells in our eyes. So if that gene's messed up, you can't see properly. Exactly. And that's where gene therapy comes in. It's like delivering a software update. Mind blow. So they literally go in and fix the faulty code in your DNA. Kind of. They take a harmless virus and basically gut it, take out the bad stuff. Then they insert a healthy copy of that G-U-C-Y-2-D gene into the virus. So the virus is like a delivery truck. Yep. They inject it into the eye. And it carries that good gene into the targeted cells. And boom, vision restored. Not quite boom. It takes time for those healthy genes to start working, producing the right proteins. But it works. It does. One patient in the trial, uh, they described it like turning on a dim light after years of darkness. Wow. That's, I mean, seriously, that's giving someone their life back. It's incredible, isn't it? And think, this is still early stage research. Right. This trial is pretty small. Exactly. We need larger trials, FDA approval, all that. But still, the potential is huge. It's mind-blowing. And this is just the beginning, folks. The knowledge we're gaining about gene therapy, it's like opening a door to treating so many other conditions. Oh, absolutely. I mean, look at muscular dystrophy. Right. We were reading about this amazing research at Nationwide Children's Hospital using something called, get this, dual gene therapy. Yeah, Dr. Martin's work is really innovative. See, current treatments for MD... They mostly just try to stop the disease from getting worse. They're not actually fixing the problem. Right. And that's where dual gene therapy comes in. So what is it exactly? It's like a double whammy of gene editing? Basically. They deliver two genes at once using a single vector. Okay, so one to halt the disease. And another to actually rebuild the damaged muscles. Are you serious? That sounds like something out of a comic book. I know, right? And the craziest part is it's already working in mice. Mm -hmm. Like... Mice with MD that got this therapy, they regained normal walking ability. No way. Yes. They were walking around like normal mice. And and here's the thing. This could help with like all types of muscular dystrophy, not just one specific kind. You got it. Plus, it has potential for other muscle wasting diseases too. So we're talking about potentially giving people back their strength, their mobility. Exactly. Regardless of what caused the muscle loss in the first place. This is unbelievable. But okay, so let's say these therapies work. 
how do we even measure how well they're working? We need some way to track that, right? Exactly. You have to be able to measure it. And this is where that Stanford article comes in. Oh, right. The one about Parkinson's. Yeah. So it's focused on Parkinson's, but the tech they're talking about, yeah. huge implications for gene therapy too. Welcome back to the deep dive. So these researchers at Stanford, they've developed this device, right? It's called the Key Duo, and it can measure motor function like you wouldn't believe. Seriously, what, like how fast someone can tap their fingers? That's just the start. It can measure the pressure of each tap, tiny tremors, stuff you'd never catch with the naked eye. I see where you're going with this. We could use this to track progress for like those muscular dystrophy patients we were talking about. Exactly. Like imagine being able to actually quantify how much a child's muscle control improves after gene therapy. That's wild. It's not even just about if a treatment works. It's about how well it works, you know, seeing those small improvements. It really personalizes the data, shows the real impact on someone's life. This is also promising. But let's be real for a sec. Gene therapy is still new. And from what I've heard, it's crazy expensive. That's the big hurdle right now, the cost. Yeah. Developing these therapies, manufacturing them. It's a huge investment. So even if we get to a point where we can treat all these diseases, will people even be able to afford it? What's being done about that? Well, that's the million dollar question, isn't it? They're exploring different payment models. Like, have you heard of annuity-based systems? Instead of patients needing to pay this massive sum up front, an annuity model would spread the cost out over time. Oh, like paying it off in installments so it's not such a huge burden. Right. Makes it more manageable. Okay, so we've got these groundbreaking therapies, the tech to track their effectiveness, but then there's the cost barrier. What else is new in the world of gene therapy? Like, what trends are we seeing? Well, that Tatita article you sent, the top 17 healthcare technology trends, one, gene therapy is at the top of their list, which is interesting. For real. What else did they highlight? AI is huge right now. And I don't just mean robots in the operating room, although that's coming too. But AI can help speed up gene therapy research itself. So like AI helping to develop therapies even faster. Exactly. AI can analyze massive data sets of genetic information, find patterns humans might miss, and help pinpoint the most promising targets for new therapies. That's insane. So AI is like supercharging the whole process. Pretty much. And it doesn't stop there. Yeah. They also talked about smart implants in relation to gene therapy. Okay, now we're getting really futuristic. Smart implants, how does that even work with gene therapy? So right now we're mostly delivering gene therapies through injections, right? But imagine tiny biocompatible implants that could release the therapy directly into the target cell. So instead of a shot, you'd get like a little implant that delivers the gene therapy continuously. That's wild. It's still early days for that tech. But it could be a total game changer, more precise, less invasive, maybe even more effective in the long run. OK, my mind is officially blown. We've got AI speeding things up, smart implants delivering treatments. Anything else? How about nanobots? You mean like microscopic robots? Yep. They could be programmed to find and repair damaged cells in the body with incredible precision. OK, that sounds like it's straight out of sci-fi nanobots fixing our DNA. Is that even possible? I know it sounds crazy, but the research is happening. It's like having a team of microscopic mechanics working on your DNA. Okay, I officially can't even process anymore. This is all just incredible. I know, right? Yeah. It's like we're on the verge of this whole new era of medicine. We really are. It's an exciting time to be paying attention to this stuff. Totally. It really feels like gene therapy has the potential to like fundamentally change how we treat diseases. Absolutely. And not just treat, but maybe even prevent them altogether, you know? So from everything we've talked about today, if you had to pick one big takeaway for our listeners, what would it be? Hmm. That's a tough one. I think I'd say don't sleep on gene therapy. This field is moving so fast and it has the potential to impact pretty much everyone's lives in some way. I'm with you on that. This is definitely a space to watch. For sure. And who knows what incredible breakthroughs we'll be talking about a year or two from now. That's the exciting part, right? The future is wide open. Well, on that note, I think we've covered a ton of ground today. We have from actual clinical trials to like nanobots. That's quite a range. Only on the deep dive, right? Yeah. We love taking our listeners from those big picture ideas to the really granular details. It's all about connecting those dots. Exactly. All right, everyone. That's a wrap on another episode of The Deep Dive. A huge thanks to our expert for joining us today. Always a pleasure.
And to all of you listening, keep those questions coming, keep exploring, and we'll catch you next time for another deep dive into the world of science and technology. All right, my trailblazing thinkers, we've reached the end of today's journey into the future of medicine. Still wrapping your head around nanobots repairing your cells? I don't blame you. But what's your take? Excited to see where this tech goes, or a little wary about having robots floating around inside you? Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this with someone who could use a reminder that science fiction is fast becoming reality. And tell us in the comments. Do you think gene therapy and nanotech will change lives, or are we moving too fast for comfort? Remember, the future doesn't wait for us. It's already here. Stay curious, stay skeptical, and keep asking the big questions, because one of those questions just might change everything. This is Theo, signing off from the frontiers of science. <laughs>